What do you do when you go to a movie? Well, you, you, you fasten on to a character, and you understand that character the same way that you understand people that you're in conversation with. Now, you might think that the way that you understand people is by you listen to what they say and you extract out the knowledge that they're delivering to you in terms of facts and you interpret the facts and you derive your understanding of the person. Like, none of that's true. That has absolutely nothing to do with how you establish a relationship with someone. And, well, here's some proof. Is that what you do with a dog? Well, obviously not, but you can establish a relationship with a dog. And so, and the relationship you have with a dog, it, it's not the same as the relationship with a person, but a dog's a pack animal. A dog can become a member of the family. You can, you can understand a dog well enough so the dog likes you. Right, and so, whatever you're doing with the dog, it isn't discourse about propositions. Because most of the dogs you own don't talk. So, and it's the same with very young children. And, and it's the same with an infant. You establish a relationship using mechanisms that aren't propositional. They're not rules, they're not descriptions, they're not facts. That's not how you do it. How do you do it? Where do you look when you talk to someone? You look at their eyes. Why? To see where they're pointing them. Why? So you can see what they're looking at. Why? So you can infer what's important to them, because we point our eyes at that's that which is important to us. That's why our eyes look the way they look. Black in the middle, colored on the ring around that, against a white background. That's an evolved mechanism. I can see your eyes. All of our ancestors who eyes, whose eyes weren't visible either got killed or didn't reproduce. The one thing you want to know about someone right away is where the hell their eyes are pointed. And you can do that politely, which you do by attending to someone without too predatory a stare. You do that by attending politely to their face, but not too intensely, and not attending, let's say, inappropriately to other parts of their body. And they're, and they're going to be watching you to see what you do with your eyes. Because the one thing you want to know about someone, above all else, is what the hell are they up to? Right? What's their aim? And so, when you go to a movie, that's what you do. When you watch a character in a role, you see him in a variety of different situations. And you watch how he structures his attention, what he pays attention to. His attention is a costly business. And so people pay attention to what they value. You watch what they attend to, and you watch how they prioritize their actions. And from that, you derive an understanding of what's important to them. As soon as you understand what's important to them, you've got their aim. You've figured that character out. This is what you do when you learn to know someone. What's their aim? As soon as you know their aim, you can see the world through their eyes. You can see the same objects they see, and the objects take on the same emotional significance. And when you say, I come to understand someone, what you really mean is, oh, I understand their aim, and now I can aim at the same thing, at least in simulation, at least fictionally, and I can come to inhabit the same world of perception and emotion that they inhabit. I can even guess at how they might act and to what they might attend in situations I haven't seen, because now I know their aim. What's he up to? That's what you're thinking in a murder mystery or in a thriller. What's he up to? What's he up to? What's going to happen next? And so, the plot of the fiction is the aim of the character across time. The aim as the character unfolds. And that might involve the transformation of his aims as well. Right? And that would be the, the transformation of a character in a movie. He aims at one thing and he learns that that aim is off in some manner, or he comes to a bitter and dismal partial end and has to switch course, and you want to see people transform their aims. That's character development.